we call it your river soul. You have a greater appreciation for your life, for your purpose, for your spouse's life, for your relationships with other people because you spent that time alone in nature. About 95% of the people who put on the river for a length like of time don't make it. To have made that journey gives you a much deeper, much greater appreciation of the Buffalo National River. Well, it's 6.10 in the morning, and we are about to head to Arkansas. To canoe the Buffalo River in Ponca, Arkansas. That's good. You've got a nice uh, level of beard growth going on. Thank you. It is all intentional. You ready to canoe for a week? I think so. I think I am ready. Having done very little canoeing in preparation for this trip, I think I'm ready. Mike Mills of the Buffalo Outdoor Center is the most knowledgeable guide on the Buffalo River in northern Arkansas. And after about 45 years of owning and operating his own business, he ought to be. Elevation on here is about 2,400, three, three to 400 at the top. When you leave Irving right here on down, you enter the Springfield Plateau. And so the top elevation is about 13, 1400 feet. So you have literally dropped 1,000 feet. Uh, from the top of the mountain to the to the area out here. Well, that means this is much more dramatic than this. The good news is the water's high. Yeah. And so, and, and it'll settle down in the next couple of days, although we got rain in the forecast Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. That means you can do 20 miles of acre east. And in fact, down in here, you can probably do 25 or 30 because everything's moving. Right. In 1972, the Buffalo River was the first river to be recognized as a national river in the United States. And now 135 miles of it lay before us. Most journeys begin with a single step. Ours required a couple paddles and a little instruction, which we were eager to get. We went and jammed right into the middle center thing, and uh, anyway, we have a lot to learn from Mike, who's a pro. We'll do just a couple of little instruction things. That sounds good. You'll know what a draw stroke is. What is it? <laughs> if this is the front of the canoe, power stroke is like this, a draw stroke is straight to the side. It's called a draw. A cross draw, you don't switch hands, you just reach over and do the same thing on the other side, come back over power. And what a draw start does, if this way takes you this way, this way takes you this way. You got it. I'm going to just... The river was high and fast, and we were doing our best to take in all the advice Mike was giving us. But there was a lot to learn. Those logs up in the tree over there are that's how high the river was like a week ago and those logs got stuck in the tree all the way up there pretty crazy mike invited us over to his place to further plan the trip and really i don't need to mark this up because I'll go with you. I, I'm going to go with you to Kyle's, which is here. You have six miles up, and then it's a, there's a trailhead, fairly well marked, walking out to what's called Whitaker Point, which is what's yeah. the pressure mm -hmm. And when you see that picture, that's me and Rob now. Really? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that, that, that photo has probably been used more. It's had more impressions made of it than any other photo ever taken in the state of Arkansas. It's on the cover of Rand McNally Map 2005. Oh, wow. It's, yes. uh, it's, it, Ar the state of Arkansas has used it over and over. They're still using it. <laughs> it's been, an, it, you, you name a magazine, it's been in it. 
uh, of the Ozarks, there's a, a, a sandstone cap on top. And that's what forms places like Whitaker Point, where the cap sticks out and the limestone that's underneath it is much softer and erodes much quicker. And when you look at the limestone, it was, it was the bed of an ocean. So 420 million years ago, this was an ocean. It was a shallow ocean, and it grew little plant, crustaceous plants called crinoids. And so every rock almost is a fossil. The water itself, you know, it's, it's already uh, turned into its limestone green color. What, what creates that green color is, is it's, it's almost like a real fine dust of limestone. Hmm. And so then when sunlight hits it, it reflects back the bluish green. There was plenty more to plan, but it was nice to stretch our legs after a day in the canoe. It was an early start the next morning. The smoke is on the mountains. Yeah, it's in the valley. It's, it's trapped in the river valley, and it's just gorgeous. Cold air from the mountains settles into the valley, and so even though the temperature and dew point are spread up here, they're together down there where that cold air has settled, and that's what's creating the fog in the valley. Hmm. Right across from Welch Bluff, there might be, yeah, the Crow Hole, you could camp there. Oh. And, and then once again, I'll go with you, so I'll make sure you see Hemden Holla and Bear Cave Holla. Emden Hollow is a more than 200 foot high waterfall. Mike takes the two mile hike there pretty quick, so you don't look up until you're there. The sight is breathtaking. On the way back, we ran into a couple of Mike's friends. You think of a better way to spend your day? Hmm. No. No. It's, it's, no. Like, it's, it's like a, a natural art museum. And Mike will tell you it's beautiful all year round. Yeah. He sees it yeah. as different, which is really nice. Yeah. We, we'd love to go Actually, hiking. Actually, we like it. Yeah. In the off season, sure. you know, one, there just aren't that many people, but it's, it's just really quiet. I'll find out. Mike, good to see you. Yeah. Mike, what happens the rest of your trip and what you're <laughs> going to be survive. doing? It's, oh, you'll survive. Yeah. You'll, 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 you know, you'll have this memory forever. So have fun. Cool. Just want to give us a brief overview of the things we're going to see from from here to the end. <laughs> Well, it's about another 125 miles of gorgeous scenery. Mm -hmm. uh, it is America's first national river, and it did not get that way because it's not special. There, there will be multitude of uh, places on the river that are stunning. Huh. A lot of places that are going to be spectacular. You've been a huge asset uh, for us and with your knowledge and generosity, and thank you so much for sharing some information uh, with us as we hit the road. Uh, you know, it's really my privilege. Mm -hmm. uh, I get to live and work here. I have my whole adult life. To be able to give you a gift of some of that knowledge and some of that skill is an honor for me, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I get a great reward out of that. It's a, it's a fantastic trip. I uh, wish I was going with you. <laughs> So I think we're finding out that we're a little ill-equipped to be filming on this river. <laughs> Cameras on water is a little trickier than I think we thought. Some of the National Park campgrounds like Kyle's are a fee place. Well, you don't have to camp there, you just get there, load your gear up, and you go right around the corner, and right across from this bluff, Muzzer Bluff, there's a nice little gravel bar. So, so this would be camp one. Um, we tipped over twice. The first time, the Osmo, which is this little camera handheld, it goes, we just got it. Really cool. Well, it's gone and broken. Well, the canoe got wrapped around a tree, and then uh, and we were stuck. And then we had to go out and Mike jumped in and was trying to like 
hefted the canoe away. He said that a river running at three miles per hour into a canoe that is trapped against a tree has about 8,000 pounds of pressure. So that was day one. We'll see how day two goes. A lot of highs and a lot of lows. Yeah, it was fun. But we're self-sufficient now. Yeah, no more. No more Mike Mills. So we're on our own. Okay. All right. So we are here at. We're here at our first camp at Buzzard Bluff. And like here it says to stay left. There's a place where the river splits just past Irby. Okay. But yeah, it says our first camp is supposed to be at. Crow Hall. All right, so we're heading to Crow Hall. We'll see you guys there. Looking at Camp One right there, you'll have gone through the most of the Class Two rapids. There's a little bitty rapid right here. Um, there's another one right here. And once you've gotten through those, really, the from here on down gets pretty good. We are now surrounded by turkey vultures. So here was the tree and we came down and we hit it sideways. And we leaned into it but it still powered and then it just filled up with water and the whole canoe just flipped over. And then it was like trapped under the tree branch. And then Daryl came over and I lifted the tree branch and Daryl kicked it from this side and the canoe just came out. But it was so full of water and all of our waterlogged stuff that it didn't go very far, which was nice. And we just portaged everything here. We're back on the river. There is like a little bit of trepidation. That's why when we tipped the last time, we just like, hit the next four or five and just like let it just to get the nerves out. It's like, we know how to do this. There's no reason we fit. All right, left. Power. Bye. Gaining back confidence after a spill is tough and we were a little timid for the rest of the day. At least all of the equipment survived. You know, here's one of my philosophies. Pick your line and then Hit them straight, hit them square. You know how to do that little toot that makes you go rush, and the bow splits the wave. And besides, by that time, you've probably had enough on the day. Give probably. yourself plenty of time to set up camp, cook, mm -hmm. relax. Right. Part, part of the joy of this river is, you know, when Ron and I go, we'll spend two nights in the same camp. Right. Just because it's so relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and once again, you want to go as slow through here because this is the best. Josiah, what are you doing? I'm pumping water. Oh, you're purifying water. Okay, I'm sorry. We put in as many miles as we can tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can get over 20. So our goal is to canoe for 20 miles tomorrow. tomorrow. So the big fear is that it's going to storm Thursday night. We just need to put in two big days. Two 20 mile days. Yeah. And then we'll be fine. When it all rests on tomorrow and us actually getting up and getting going and getting 20 miles in. Mm -hmm. That's our big challenge. We can do it. Here Daryl is pumping water in the stream. Yes. A thing we have to do pretty often. Ah, a little percolator hard at work. Day three wasn't without its trials. Because of the flood, there were logs everywhere, and the river was moving high and fast. At three to four miles per hour, the river exerts hundreds of pounds of force against a person, and thousands of pounds of force against a canoe. Oh, we don't want to the I'm gonna try to put my foot out. Oh, f me. I'm okay. I'm 
stuck to this thing. Okay. Woo! Okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I was trapped to that. Yeah. Hmm. I love you. <laughs> Any of these curves right in here would be make it, but I wouldn't go any further than say Mount Hershey. Here or around the corner, there's a nice gravel bar here. So let's just call this Camp Three, right? Mm -hmm. The miles were piling up, our shoulders were getting sore, our stomachs were sick of rice and beans, and we were getting a little nervous about having to sit out Thursday or Friday due to the storms. This bluff is just little stair steps almost. It's like climbing a ladder. But when you get up there, it's called the Narrows. Really neat photography spot. We're here at the Narrows, which is a place Mike Mills told us to stop, but I think he meant for us to to climb up there, which I don't know if we're gonna do. Yeah. So we're here at the Narrows. <laughs> Uh, which Mike Mills told us to climb up the stair step. I said it because you said the narrow spacing this way away from the microphone. So you can say it again. Oh, for God's sake. Cool. Well, let's just ask them. <laughs> Sounds good. Because that looks like the truth. You know if this is the narrows? If we rested, would people feel more apt to climb, or is it kind of like, no way? I just don't want to climb it. I'd rather keep going and find the camp. This is Skull Bluff right here. Skull Bluff is a place where it has two great big indentions, and it looks like a skull. Makes also another nice photograph. It says day, what day is it? Four? Four. Day four. We canoed about 25 miles yesterday. We're gonna do 23 or 22 today. And the stopping point for today is the town of Gilbert. Yeah, where we're hoping to wait out a storm tomorrow. So we'll see. Yeah, we, we were told to wait out the storm at a place where there would be roads. Right. Too, so just in case. We could put in a few more miles today and then try to get to Buffalo Point tomorrow tomorrow before noon. How many miles is that? But then we're, it's 20, 22 from here. You're gone four nights before you get electricity. Okay. okay. But you can also go to Gilbert and the town of Gilbert as a store right there. Okay. That is your only chance to go get ice, drinks, uh, you know, I'm sure they won't mind if you if you hang around for an hour and plug your stuff in. Okay. I used to own that store. Ah. <laughs> I got it on the historic register. I built the front porch back on it. Okay. Our first time off the river in like four days. Yeah. And it feels yeah. nice. Um, but we found out it's not going to storm tomorrow until about noon. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Should mean we do we could do five and then fifteen tomorrow. If we <laughs> paddle and get to mommy. Well that's ground, like twelve miles away, right? I think it's I think mommy north is at least twelve. Because then it still is eight or so to Russia's Landing, mm -hmm. and then at least 25 to Buffalo City. We're about to leave Gilbert. Uh, we've decided to head out a few more miles, and uh, we're going to try to get to Buffalo Point tomorrow. And maybe Buffalo City is another question because we just got some more time because of the rain. So anyway, uh, we'll see if we can make it. Woohoo!
The trip had started to feel a little daunting, and the threat of weather made us put in as many miles as we could. We struggled to get to Maumee, our first day of over 30 miles on the river. Maumee. Thanks, Maumee. And we're having for dinner tonight. Rice and beans with cheddar cheese crackers. Mm. What day is that? They were talking Friday. Friday or Saturday. Camp 5 was there, but if we do Camp 5, 6. So this is... And you guys may go a lot faster than this. Sure. Which is okay, because I'm telling you, down in here, you can do 30 miles a day. Mm. Maumee Buffalo Point is also a campground but it's your last chance to get electricity and then really from here down to here is usually about a three-day trip other than when you're in high water and you could probably do it in two good morning good morning it's about maybe seven 7.30. 7.30 on uh, Thursday morning, and we are just leaving South Mami. Yes. So a bald eagle just flew by into the mist and left one lonely feather. But we will not be taking it with us. Uh, we call it your river soul you have a greater appreciation for your life, for your purpose, for your spouse's life, for your relationships with other people because you spent that time alone in nature. And people need that filled up. Twelve miles in, well, we left it, we think, like, Seven or 7.30, and now it's 9.49, 9.50. And we are at Buffalo Point. Assuming that you make it all the way, you're gonna call me from Buffalo Point, or probably Buffalo Point, because that's gonna be the place where you get phone. Okay. And tell me that you're at Buffalo Point. Okay. And that you figure that in two days, you'll be at Buffalo City for three days. It depends on how you're feeling. It depends on how you're looking at the weather. Mm -hmm. Or it depends on, do I come get you here? It's about two days away, and we're going to have to stop pretty soon because of uh, rain coming up, but I don't have any service. So can't call Mike. Hopefully there's service at um, Rush Landing. Uh, otherwise, I don't know what to do. But true to Highway Walker's style, we hitched a ride to the top of the mountain and hopefully better reception. Hopefully Buffalo City, that's the plan. The whole river. Yeah. yeah. Well, with the river so high, we've been moving pretty fast. You know, this is probably the highest point. Yeah. I still don't have any nervous yet? No. Well, it's just nice to move fast. <laughs> Yeah, I got some. Uh, Johnston, I'm with um, a group that are, we started in Ponca and we're going to Buffalo City. Mike had asked me to call. You ride back down? Are you sure? sure. That's... He's calling me back. Hello? Yes. Okay, we might lose service here. Uh, we're just getting a ride back down the hill. But sounds good. Okay, I'll do my best. We're at Buffalo Point, and we're going to keep going and get a little past Rush, I think, tonight. We'll see him at Buffalo City. We'll see you Saturday. at Buffalo City, Saturday at 2. Lost. This is our first time. First thing he just did the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> what did you What's your name? Yeah. Doug, Doug, nice Doug. to meet you. I'm Josiah. I'm Daryl. How many miles did we canoe today? God, I think 20 plus, and it's probably like 2. 
one? It's uh, 12.30. 12.30. Also, no rain. <laughs> this is the, supposed to be the big thunderstorm day. If we can put in another 15 yeah. miles today, we can make it to make Buffalo it. City. I can't believe we thought that we weren't going to make it. This morning was a little cloudy, and last night we got maybe two hours of rain. So Getting ripe. A little... Oh, I, yeah. I could really smell myself last night for the first time. Okay. <laughs> what a twist. What a twist. We might finish the Buffalo River. Another 30-mile day. We were feeling strong and confident. We were getting used to paddling hours at a time. What could stop us now? Which when you pass Rush, Clabber Creek is coming in on the right hand side right here. Because it floods, it pushes gravel out into this huge current. And so right in here, it's really usually just big haystacks. So three foot waves. Hit them straight, hit them square. You know how to do that little tooth that makes you go rush, the bow splits the wave. This is the place that John boat operators, they're kind of laid back and sitting in the seat and they're, and all of a sudden, boom, boom, and her John boat nose goes under the water because they weren't ready for it. And so once again, this is a place where you're on your knees, make sure your bow is square into those waves and that kind of stuff. Can you hit them square? <laughs> uh, you've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, now we're on the right. All right, hold on your paddle. Oh. Holy shit! Holy shit. Woo! Woo! Paddle hard! Paddle hard! All right, all right, all right. Keep us steady. Make sure we don't hit anything. Oh that man! Was some crazy rapids. Yeah. Keep in mind, in terms of like the, way straight on, the Grand Canyon or like the I don't know what that rapid would be classified as. Maybe a three? No, no two. A two. I say that rapid. Oh, that rapid is still a two. Maybe a but we're talking about people who otherwise were novices coming. <laughs> who and, just started? Uh, in the in the course of six or seven days, I think we've learned a lot, and uh, that was very 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 exciting. That was a lot of fun. So we are canoeing and there are some nice looking clouds coming in. We looks like we're trying to outrun a storm a little bit. And we're not sure if we could keep should keep going. See if we can't find stay ahead of it or find a campsite. It's thundering right now. Yeah. Oh, well I guess we have plastic canoes. So we should be good. But here's your options. Anytime there's a bluff. Across from it is usually a gravel bar, and 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 particularly when it's a bluff with in a curve. So as you look down through here, look at that, look at that curve right there, look at this curve, big bluff gravel bar. Um, same way in all of these curves here. There's a good example. You know, when you find that, there's always going to be a nice gravel bar on the other side. How's the look up there? Not in the center of the tent, but in the center of... That's yeah. pretty good. Why huh? not? Yeah, put it in the center of the tent. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that looks like it helped. And it's been raining for like two hours. Yeah, about two hours. Oh. <laughs> you gotta get fresh water however you can. That's how full it is. And it's, it's a pretty wet floor. And it's not waterproof at all. So far, so good. We've got five days of growth right here, and you're <laughs> wet, cold, tired, haven't eaten, but, uh, you know. Beans and rice. Beans and rice for five days.
things change. You have nobody else to blame, so you blame me. <laughs> Our tents are a little, a little wet. A little like a little lake in there. Yeah. We had a break from the rain. Uh, I'm glad we stopped because it was thundering and lightning pretty bad. We're not that far from Buffalo City. Yeah, maybe six or eight miles. It's so pretty good. Hopefully it's not raining tomorrow morning and we can okay. just Probably. get up and go. Yeah. We found like a little slice of paradise. <sighs> How are you feeling about the trip? Really good. It's the end of day six and camping on a beautiful secluded beach just like that we think is about eight miles from Buffalo City, which is the end of the Buffalo River. Almost everyone on the river that we met was from a two-state radius. They'd ask us where we were going, and we'd say, uh, Buffalo City. They'd say, you're going the whole way? I've always wanted to do that. And how interesting it is that we had to come from South Carolina and Minnesota to canoe this river, what things are in our backyard that we've neglected to see because of the idea of convenience. I'll get to it later. But that just doesn't always happen. You, you really have to be intentional about taking the time to go and do something like that. The idea that this is in the northern, northwest Arkansas, and I can't believe it. It just makes me wonder what else is out there that I just haven't seen. Beautiful night, yeah. going to bed. Uh, exhausted and full of rice and beans and just very grateful. You know, I could do a, a few more nights of rice and beans. <laughs> Me too. It's pretty good. here coming out of that river what is the what is the, the pickup like? you have a couple of choices when you when the buffalo enters the white river it's really kind of entering right here at this island the normal pickup point is buffalo city but you have to paddle back upstream on the white river all right so we are trapped on this island we made it to the end we made it. we're at the end yes and but we are trapped on this island, and Daryl is trying to get this, the attention of some people. Hello? But we are on an island, and the flow is very strong, and we cannot canoe upstream. Also, we have no cell phone reception. Good luck. We're so close! Daryl's knee is twitching, because he's so cold. So we're shouting across the river <laughs> to get uh, to ask someone to dial the boat service for us because their current right now on the White River is too strong for us to paddle upstream, which is what you're supposed to do. But because it's in high water and flood stage, uh, the current is like way too strong. We the second we put our nose into that current, it like whipped us around. Eight seven zero. <laughs> of the Buffalo and White River after a week of paddling. And hopefully Mike is uh, in the office. This is Mike. Hey Mike, this is Daryl. Hey. We, uh, we made it. You're there. We are, uh, yeah, we're right here. What, where, what is Riley's. it? We're at Riley's. Riley's, okay. I will be down there. It'll take me about an hour and a half to get there. Oh wow, thank you so much. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll just be here. Okay, I'll be down there, uh, like I said, give me about an hour and a half. Sounds good. Take your time. All right, you bet. See Thank ya. you. Bye-bye. All right, we have a ride. I've said all along this is a very special river. 
It's America's first national river. It did not get that way because it's not special. You guys have now experienced that uniqueness, that 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 feeling of of isolation, of peace, of exhilaration when you hit haystacks or when you're maneuvering around rapids or or when a raccoon gets your drive back at night or uh, you know all of that combination is this river the thing most people don't do is they don't take enough time to fully appreciate it they they come and they float for a day and they paddle and they get off the river and they go back home and while they did experience it they did understand a small portion of it they really didn't grasp the whole river. Very few people actually put in at Ponca and take out at Buffalo City on one trip. Yeah. Uh, very, very few actually make that journey. To have made that journey gives you a much deeper, much greater appreciation of the Buffalo National River. Right. About 95% of the people who put on the river for a length like of time don't make it. And so what you have done in modern days is uh, a, a true adventure. Don't you worry about me I will be your key I'm gonna take it like I find it Live this life day by day Let my troubles be my road map To where I do not want to be Then I'll hang on until the morning Don't you worry about me Mountain truck stop and a phone call Hello mama, it's just me I'm hung up between Denver And the deep blue sea 